Hi He5, thanks for joining me today on our next Gym Chat podcast. Today's episode is with Alex Cannon from Stealth Cheshire BJJ. So Alex, thanks for coming in today and, and discussing this little insight into Jiu Jitsu. Can you tell us what is Brazilian Jiu Jitsu? Thanks for having us in, mate. It's good, it's good to do it. Uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu is simply a, a, a combat sport, uh, a martial art, and a self defence, um, and we cater for all forms of that. So, what makes it different to any other martial arts? Um, well, it's it's ground fencing basically. So grappling, um, uh, you know, you find boxing, karate, you know, the, all the mainstream ones. So, so Jiu Jitsu to be that man. Um, we fight ground. Although we start standing when we compete, we find the ground and you know, these guys are standing. So in fact, there's, there's no striking, there's no punching, there's no kicking. So is it a form of wrestling? Yeah, well, you, you've, got, you've got elements of wrestling, a lot of the guys train wrestling to complement the jiu-jitsu. Uh, we recommend that. Um, so wrestling is different to jiu-jitsu? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a different system, although you know, both complement each other um, really well. The, the other thing is, you know, there's elements of judo as well. Obviously, because we always start standing, particularly when we compete. Um, you know, training differs depending on what we wear on the time, but yeah, there's no one to judo um, and uh, wrestling. Well. Right. Do you find that most people start for self defence or is it for competition? I, th- I, I think there's a good mix to be honest with you, it depends on the individual. Um, but what we tend to do here is we, we teach or we coach people to what their goals are. Um, so, so you know, if I got one the young lad that comes in, you know, already, you know, a lot of the guys don't speak too much about competing at first, and you know, the guys will express an interest. So, if that's the case, then I would, I would coach them accordingly so that they are a competitor. Other guys are coming with fitness, you know, they want to be fitness or just do it to get out of the house. You know, it can be a number of reasons. So, you know, we try my best to take into account each of the individual's goals. And, so, as well. so it's not all about learning the actual martial arts. It, there's a lot of more benefits to do. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There's the, you know the, the benefits to, to what they do. You know what the guys want. Again, from what their goals are. You know they have you know the benefits of people. You know mental health. You know challenges will come in and you know it helps them. And you know, obviously I'm a big advocate for that. You know, for the guys myself, you know, suffer with myself. Um, fitness wise, you know to lose weight, people stop drinking. It's, you know, it's one of the toughest yeah. physical activities you can do, really. And I think from you know working with you the last few years that a lot of the lads that come in are very friendly, and yeah. you've got like a little family going on. And yeah, it's, a community as well, isn't yeah, it? It's, it's, we, we, it's not like obviously with the COVID, like people are saying all oh, the gyms are closed. I don't classes as a gym. Yeah, um, it's more like a, a school academy. Almost like a drop-in centre. Yeah. I mean, this is why when I set up what we set up here, why we had this little cold area because I want you know people to be able to come in and have a coffee or have a chat or you know come in and train or whatever. Yeah. So it's more than just thing. a martial art. Isn't yeah, it? yeah, it's a, yeah, it's, a, it's so much more than that. It's like a, almost like a community centre in many ways. I would say you know we, we we encourage the guys to be involved, not just in on the mats. You know we've got WhatsApp groups and social media and all that. We all interact. It's more like a team, mm-hmm. uh, you know, we put a big emphasis on team here, you know, he goes back to the last two months. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So, going into Jiu-Jitsu, mm. when I see the lads and, um, and the girls then on the mats mm. and they're wearing these, um, the geese, the yeah, yeah. why, why do they wear the geese? What's um, the that? Well, it's, 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 the gi itself, um, obviously, one of the primary things with Jiu-Jitsu and the gi is the grip fighting. Grip, grip fighting is, is, is really important. Um, so the gear and the jacket itself, you know, we, we use the lapels, we can use them to choke, you know, your opponent with, we can use the collar, use our own sleeves. You know. So the gear's there to use as a tool yeah. to bring them down yeah. to the floor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You use the tool for like the stand up, there's a lot of grip fighting that goes on, and then once the, the you know goes down to the ground, the grip fight continues then. You can see a little bit more about what's involved rather than just Dragging yeah, someone to the floor yeah, and pulling them. You know, there's so much more to it. And, and going back to like, you know, the reasons why people train as well, you, you've got so many different aspects. You've got like guys who compete, somebody who comes in, not particularly competitive. You know, so like an older guy or, you know, they 
guys then you know, you know they, when they're training with each other, you know, there's like an adaptation to the training accordingly. So if somebody wants to come in and they're a little bit intimidated by the guys who want to compete, mm -hmm. the guys who compete know who you know to roll competitively with. Who's there yeah, for what yeah, reason? So, yeah. so if anyone was intimidated walking into it, in jiu-jitsu, I imagine the majority would be the same way. People don't understand. Yeah. So like we got we got 16 year old lads, 17 year old lads. You know we got Morgan. 17, I think she's 16, 17 at the moment. She comes in, she goes with the guys, but the guys understand the recognise the difference between the physicalities of two people. Yeah. You know, so you get the big guy coming into a small and yeah. the more advanced guy coming into the white belt. It's, 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 it's the adapt. And I think for like someone new or interested in jiu-jitsu, it can be an intimidating environment mm -hmm. from the outside, but from yeah. what I've seen up here, when you step in mm -hmm. and you know you do open the door and take that first step in, yeah, yeah. you are welcomed. Yeah, yeah, Everyone yeah. friendly. Yeah. You know, there's no, there's no problems. Yeah. Yeah, everyone's welcome. But that was all. But I think going back to the family thing is, is a big a repulsion at the moment. I think the problem with COVID is it, it's put the the, the kind of a lot of things that are planned for the beginning of the year. Yeah. So the kids program we were teaching kids before COVID kicked in about and you know. Rather than mess around with it, just completely stop, stop yeah. teaching the kids until it was cleared up. Now, when we're going back to having the kids program, we're going to have this place for the kids. Yeah. Around, you know yeah. what I mean? And it's, and it's going back to like, you know, these difficult times. Now it's, you know, it's, it's just going to be so much better once we're able to open again. And then you get the kids in and we're going to have family classes with it. Well, dad's going to train with the lads and mm. daughters can train with the mums yeah. and so on and so forth. So it's there then comfy. Mm -hmm. Women's classes as well. Yeah, you know, it's that, that would help you think once we're able to do all that, mm -hmm. it'd be even better. Definitely. Mm -hmm. So, going back to the start for yourself, mm -hmm. how, when did you start Jiu Jitsu? How did you get into it? Uh, I think it was about, it's going to be 10 or 11 years now, maybe a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. uh, at the time, I used to play a lot of football when I was young, in the 20s in the forces, and I yeah. worked in the ACL. So from that point on, when I, when I, you know, so I'm not really playing much football from that point. For that, that period of time then, my the 20s, late 20s, going into my 30s, and just pretty much giving up on a lot of things, including my health. So I put on a bit of weight. I reckon I was walking around, you know, maybe 95, 100 kilograms at the time. Right. Um, I think I would have been 34. Yeah, 34, so not young. So like, they yeah, so the late, yeah, and what, what's, what got me interested was uh, UFC. Now, I've not watched UFC for, for, for a good while now because it's all changed, but when I watched the UFC, it was the grappling side of it that got my attention, that got my interest because it just, you know, the technical side of it, you know, you haven't seen your brain's approach to what you need to do on the ground, it's a bit of a difference, and obviously there's the side to stand up as well. But, that just attracted my attention. So I found that you know the nearest place to me was about a five minute walk. walk exactly. I was just in a community centre, you know, with a, a, a few guys who were just, you know, I think they just stuck up on start on themselves really. So there was only a couple of blue belts at the time and we were kind of like teaching ourselves. Mm -hmm. So we'd have a guy called Fisher who was, you know, he would he was a pair of belts at the time, Carl's been doing it for years. He's down in London now in Wimbledon. He he would come in and it was literally, I think he was every two weeks. So we get a pair of block up and teach it every two weeks for an hour and an hour and a half. And then outside that that might be more suitable very new to themselves. And they'd had a lot of martial arts experience. So how many was in the group at the time? So well, I think when, when I first went in, though, it was only small because it was mixed in with like a, a Wing Chun group as well. Right. So, you know, these guys would do Jiu-Jitsu and then they'd do Wing Chun or something like that. But then, it, when, when I started, it, it seems like the Jiu-Jitsu had just gone like that. It was just expanding and more people so it became its own separate thing within within that corpus at the time. Um, so there'd be a you know, varied numbers. I would say it's more, much more than 10 at the time, really. No more double figures. Yeah. So from when you first started, when was your first competition? Um, oh, it wasn't long after, I think about three months to be honest with you. How did you yeah, and it was an intercom one. So it wasn't like a proper comp. So I've been training for about three or four months and I always had the idea that it was to, to compete. But it may be longer, but at, at that point we've not done too much stand up. So obviously when you compete, everyone starts standing up, you get to take down. Then you go from there. So I'm, I'm at this club, it was in a, a, a gym in, in uh, somewhere in Bradford, it was combat bases, one of the, that he was with at the time. 
And I went in there and it was, I don't know if I'm going to take that. No, I mean, like yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm like this, <laughs> literally two minutes before I'm going to go in, and the room wasn't much bigger than this. Yeah. Right, and it was rammed all off the side of the match, just rammed all these people, and some intimidating looking guys. Yeah. And, and I was a bit of a fatty at the time. So I'm walking in, and he's like showing me this one takedown, all how to put the guard, literally before I'm about to go out the match. Yeah, so I think uh, I won one last one. One, one by submission, I lost the other one on points. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that was my first experience of competing. Yeah, yeah a bit of that. I enjoyed it, yeah. yeah, yeah. They, what do I want them like plastic mount medals? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. so from then, did you really, you know, you knew this was your passion, this is the route you wanted to go down? Yeah, yeah, and I kind of um, physically had to, there was a lot of catching up for me to do. So, like, the wrong guys were fitter, some of them half my age. Yeah. You know, so it was a bit tough at first, so and obviously the knees, I couldn't kneel or crouch when I started. You know, my physical ability was way off. Really? And, and that's why I say to a lot of the guys, you know, about this injury and that injury, so I, you know, and I'll explain to them what my story was and how Jiu Jitsu helped me in terms of flexibility, my joints and everything else. Yeah. You know, so it's, um, yeah, it's just, a bit of a transformation for yourself. Yeah, you? but I just, I kind of took to it mentally. You know, the approach to it, I, you know, I kind of twigged onto that. Like I say, physically, I just had to try and catch up. I, yeah. I, was, getting, I was getting, you know, a good high. And, yeah. So when you did your first competition in third form, mm. which is quite late on, has Jiu Jitsu got a Masters like, um, I spoke to Darren about yeah, that. Yeah. So they do the same. Yeah, yeah, I think uh, I speak to Darren, I think it's pretty much the same kind of thing. So um, I'm not entirely sure at the top of my head what the ages are. It's basically broke down in Masters, you know, Masters, Masters 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and it goes on and on. Um, and so on. Which is great because you've still got competition yeah, yeah, even as you're getting older. I think now I just jumped to Masters 4, so that's like 45, 46, up to 50s, right. 30s, 50s. But yeah, previous to that, Masters, you know, and as, as you get further on, there's, there's obviously few guys competing, so you from my own personal journey, competing wise, did a lot of the uh, national stage at comps here at Ferns, you know, and loads of different ones. Um, and then as I started to coach them, like some blue and purple belts, I eased off the competing on the circuit right. and, and just maintained you know, competing at the main events, the IBJJF ones, because when I'm coaching, I like to just to be able to coach. Yeah. It's different. Yeah. yeah, it's different whereas you're coaching people but then mm. also you've got to train yourself to yeah, do the competition. Yeah. So when we, when we get guys competing at say Blackpool or you know in, in Manchester or something, I will mm. mentor them ones because they'll be about five or six lads yeah. you know, and I need to be able to make sure that they're they've got to be your focus. Yeah, they're their priority. Yeah. Yeah. And then again go, it, it's, I think that's why starting so late is a benefit to my guys now because uh, it's, it's, just, it's not about me really now. My my goal has changed from you know, once it was a, I'm still going to compete, you know, but once it changed from you know, my competition record to developing some you know, real yeah, competitors, real really you know, yeah. but at the same time, that, that team element was more important. Definitely. Now, we've got some nice medals on here, haven't we? There's a couple up behind you. Yeah. What are they from? Uh, well, the, these, um, you've got. The, the, the two big ones there, the Masters, you've got um, the Masters, uh, which is how I've inherited that one there. Now that's purely from, like you were saying, the competition, so you just get the older competitors in there. Um, the IBJJF ones, when you go to them, you've got like the, the young stars, all these athletes that come through, all these like, yeah. stars and that, and then obviously the Masters at the end. So um, I would say IBJJF would be the main ones, um, and for me, the National Masters are the two. So personally, you've done very well coming from 34. Yeah. And I think what they were doing. I mean, the competition record's all right. I would like to have competed more, yeah. but for you know, injuries. And then obviously, as of, I've kind of like gone into coaching a bit earlier than you would then, I mean, maybe, or I right. want to. Mm -hmm. But, you know, maybe my maybe goal was it's just to be a better top. coach than to be a better competitor. Yeah, yeah. Uh, now, next to the medal, we've got mm. the belt. Mm. So in Jiu Jitsu is it similar to like other martial arts where you've got a different colour belt and you can work your way up? Yeah, I think I don't know too much about the other ones, you know, I've been working on karate for a while, they have a number of different colours. Mm. 
with Jiu Jitsu, it's, it's literally white, blue, purple, brown, black. That's it. And it can, you know, pe different affiliations, different gyms that they have a different approach to how they promote. Right. You know, so, time scale, you know, it depends on, on the individual, it depends on the gym, how they, you know, we don't have like a test, don't have a test. You know, so, no, my, right, guys, my guys are, are, are you know, white belt, and I don't, they don't have a specific test where they, you know, have to do certain things to them in blue belt. It, it's basically a watch over a period of time, and then if they compete, you know, a gauge how they develop and look at how they compete. Guys who aren't competing, I watch how they, you know, shape them up on the mat, and that's how. So you're able to judge what someone yeah, yeah, take yeah, off basically, yeah, basically, you know, on, on how they are on the mats as opposed to the past. I suppose it depends how much time they put in on the mats yeah, as well. Yeah, and I always say to the guys, you know, what size, it's like anything else, you know, you don't show people more time than the gym. Yeah, things are not improving, it's the same for the guys, if they want to get better at this, you know, if they want to get better themselves, mm. which, you know, you find the gym makes you a better person. Definitely, definitely. On average, how long? I know you just said, you know, you can't really say, but mm. any idea on what a new would be to get to black? Yeah, well, I can give you a couple of examples. There's, uh, and again, it depends on, on what your goal is and your approach. Um, you know, Kid Dale, who's you know, a well known grappler on, on the other world scene, like he's competed yeah. in the world and so on and so forth. He's things like you know, Australian Championships and past Pan American and stuff like that. I think it was four years he got to black belt. Really? Yeah. That's quick, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, I, I couldn't really average it. Again, it depends on the individual. Some people take 15 years to get to black belt. Yeah. Like, what, 10 years I was going to be brown, it's cool to two years to be brown belt now. So, you know, <laughs> it, it, it depends. It depends. The guys, I mean, looking at the lower belts going from white to blue, again, it depends on the individual. Mm. You know, we've got some guys there that just like take it to it. It could be a year or two. Yeah. You know, other guys, you might do one hour a week. And yeah, I think I you know each one of mine, each each belt I can find an injury, so the white white to blue belt he goes with another one comes at the time, it took me three years to learn you've got after the number comes and you know, there's no there's no easy fix and that that, that goes down to the guys here as well. Yeah. So you've got it there, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, you've got yeah, to yeah. yeah, and what I say to the guys when you do get your blue belt or your purple belt or your brown belt, um, you're gonna be ready for that for that phase. You know, you're gonna be ready. Or else it's something you think. Yeah, it's a challenge of just not being ready for yeah. you know, step up. Yeah. So we'll go back to competition. So mm -hmm. on a competition day, yeah. I think we'll watch a little video so yeah, it's a little yeah. bit easier to explain mm -hmm. what's actually happening yeah. in a competition. Mm -hmm. So on the competition, what's actually going on in, on the mat? What, what are you trying to achieve? Okay, Alex, so obviously you see you starting off on your feet. Yeah. What is the goal here? What you're trying to achieve? All right. So the, the aim for for, for you know, is just get the takedown. Now that there is a take we should referee. It will give you two points. Right. Now with the takedown, with any change in position, you have to have that position for three seconds. So I've got the takedown here. So from this point on, now my aim is is to pass the guy's guard, which is to simply get around his legs, under his legs, over his legs. However, where I can into like a side control position. There's a number of different positions that we've got, you know, that, that we can explain. But my aim is to obviously get past around my legs and get a submission. Right? So, if you try and get him on his back, well, yeah, I've taken him down to get him on his back. Right. So I have to get him on his back and keep him there for three seconds, you know, to get them points. And then from that position, then I have to try and get past his legs. His aim is to either submit me with a chunk, triangle, armbar, whatever he can, or to sweep me to get me on my back, and then then he would he would then. Right. You see, so there's a lot of in that position there, closed guard now, which is not ideal for me. Um, he can be quite comfortable there. So once he opens his legs, that's not my cue. So as soon as you score your points, mm -hmm. you know it doesn't look like you. No, you I'm your back foot. You yeah, stay, no, yeah, yeah, stay on the floor. That's it. Once it goes down to the floor, unless the referee starts, you miss your out of bounds or anything, the referee will bring you back to the centre. But right. you know it's um, so it's the, the different moves. Mm. Score different points. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, in this position here now, if he was to sweep me and get me on my back, he would get uh, three points for that. Yeah, and now we'd be looking to pass the guard. He would get points for that. And then is this one? So I'm going to pass the guard here. And you see what the two say about the gi. You know, right, controlling yeah. the gi. Um, so pass it. If you watch the referee now, once I maintain that position, 
Yeah, he'll give me an extra three points then for passing the guard. There it is. Yeah. So at this point, this, this is the final thing. So I'm, I'm nice and relaxed. This might be no rush. Mm -hmm. I like to get my points up and then I'll, I'll look at the finish. Um, so how many rounds is that? Uh, well, you, at Masters, um, it's it's a five minute round, and you just you just fight the one guy for five minutes. Right. And depending on how many you've got in your bracket, it could be eight, sixteen, whatever. You would basically have a five minute fight, then the rest of your bracket will fight, and you know, the next round you go again. So you can't have a grand prix right. kind of set up. So you can, not only brackets, you, have, you can go into a comp and have one one competitive fight, yeah. round, two, three, four. You know, the younger guys go into a comp. That must be dreadful. Yeah. I mean, holding someone down for you it's, know. It's, yeah. I don't say it's a surprise because you're using everything. Yeah. You're literally using everything. Can you win before the round's finished, or have you got to Yes. Yeah. Well, round? yeah. I mean, that's the main aim. If you can get a submission, um, that'd be like a choking arm lock, or something like that kind of, you know, anything like that. That's when the fight stops. Yeah. But if you go the distance, then it comes to the point. So. So it is, you know, because it's there now. Now I'm on my back. My aim is I'm trying to get an arm lock through there. Like a, it's a rear lock, it's called. But I couldn't get it through. So then my aim is to either finish him or again get him on his back. Right. So, uh, so with Jiu Jitsu there, how is it? Is it ranked as in the belt? So you're finding someone who's also a purple belt. Yes. Yeah. What about weight? Does that yeah, yeah, it's kind of category, is it? Well, yeah, so um, I normally can buy a He's a middle heavy, which is 88 kilograms, 88.3. And when you weigh in, you get there the day, you weigh in an hour before you compete. So there's none of this, you know, coffee weight and, yeah. and, you know, 24 hours. You literally have to be on weight. Because when you weigh in, and I do judge F1 particularly, it's like an hour before you go on. Right. Um, so, yeah, there's, uh, there's a number of weight brackets as well. Yeah. So, Alex, we're going to go back to you, obviously, do your Jiu Jitsu. Mm -hmm. But obviously, being a member of a duty to club yeah. and starting your own club is a big jump. Yeah. What made you want to start your own club? Um, I think there was a number of reasons, really, in personal circumstances. Uh, I, it just, it just kind of like I was asked if I would coach at the gym. Um, I just left a place where I was training before, so I was looking for someone else to train. And, and, and our mutual friend said, "No, so he's looking for a jiu jitsu coach." The gym in Runcorn, so I thought, okay, I'll, I'll check it out. So we literally uh, went down and we, it, it just grew from there. Then so we started teaching just some like small classes, three or four people, and just grew. Mm -hmm. And grew. So at that point, then, you know, we knew there was something, kind of knew there was something there. It was myself and a friend Chris would help out with, with, with coaching. Um, so we, it just it just kind of presented it itself in many ways. Yeah. So at that point, then, because the, the gym itself it was a lot of did have an affiliation for his Jiu Jitsu, so we went and found, uh, we signed up with Arlen Sakira, who was a uh, black belt, uh, one of the first presenters to go on to the UK, he's black belt in London. So we were with Arlen for a couple of years, I think, and it's been the main of one, and there was, I wanted that regular of contact with the guys, with the guys, because I, mean, I was only a pair of belts, and I was a blue belt at the time, so I wanted the guys to have that regular contact with belt, you know, guys who are experienced, and make sure all the limitations are. Mm -hmm. So we, we went with ours and the, the distance was, was creating too many problems. So that's when you know put the feelers out and we, you know, we came across and I know with Steve Campbell, who's uh, uh, the black belt in stealth right. in Jiu Jitsu, which is based in uh, Manchester. Mm -hmm. and, um, thankfully he you know agreed to take us on allowed us to join his affiliation. Um, so now we've got you know the, the 40 minutes away, we've got you know the guys can tap into uh, six, seven black belts there. Champions guys who compete the world stage, you know, they've been so if you get back on down, you know, yeah. every every couple of weeks to teach the guys, you know. Um, so do you think that affiliation to style oh, has massive. helped you move forward? Yeah, massive, yeah, it's massive. And you know, the reputation is soft, we ask a girl in the UK. Right. You know, it's up there. Yeah. With, with the big boys, so yeah, there's a uh, no brainer really. Yeah, yeah. I, I think for me, because I, I remember going back just over four years ago, when you approached me yeah, about the right? yeah, yeah, yeah. You've been on a bit of a journey, haven't yeah, you? Yeah, I mean, we were kind of like, the issue was forced on, on me particularly, where we were teaching previous. So when we found this place, obviously I, I already had the maths, I was kind of ready to go. Um, so, you know, we 
we came here and there was, there was, there was, there was, there was just something about this place that because it's the kind of a one stop shop and I'm all about, you know, I don't want to be going here then everywhere and it's obviously yourself and all the guys were so helpful yeah. made us feel welcome, wanted us to be here you know, I'm saying how many plants have we started off like two or three weeks? I, well, I tried to find out before we done the podcast and yeah. um, it was over so four years ago and I think it started off in two a week really? Is that yeah, all? yeah, yeah, two oh, a week so, yeah. I, I mean for me oh, because there wasn't any time, was it? no, because there was no time and, and I remember you coming in and you still do come in at six. I think at one point you were booking out the studio Monday to Friday, six o'clock in the morning. Yeah. In December, in yeah. January, it's freezing mm-hmm. cold. I'm mm-hmm. like, you must be mad, but yeah. it was just that love of yeah, what you do. Yeah, and it's the love of it. I mean, don't get me wrong, I could do the line of it. <laughs> the love of it, yeah, but also uh, practicality as well, because now, nowadays you've got guys who can shift work and, mm. and families. Well, I was, particularly for me, because I, you know, I was only doing this and time is, is difficult so sometimes for a lot of the guys to train at six o'clock in the morning is ideal because they've done the training because they might be work that day they might be working either yeah. so that and you know the, the morning class is a nice relaxed yeah you know, so it was, I, I, I think for me watching the you know i, I made up to see you because you've gone from coming four years ago doing two classes a week to i think you got up to 16 hours a week uh, doing different classes, you know, oh, different ages, um, even the kids' classes. And you've got to a point where you've made your dream yeah. a reality yeah. because now you've got this fantastic facility mm. from nothing, yeah. literally nothing, yeah. knowing that you wanted to yeah. like, this to happen. Yeah. And every time I walk through that door, I smile. I don't know how many times I've said to you, I'm happy I am to yeah. see you in your own space because. Yeah. I know what this room used to be. I think yeah. it, was, it was just a storeroom. Yeah. SOG, RJ Lewis done a great job, but then you put your spin on it and made mm. it into this. Everyone, everyone I think to that door goes, wow, yeah. isn't it a lot here? It's, it, it's just yeah. great to see that you've come from here and you're now there. Yeah. And I think, obviously, we are in COVID times and it is tough times and I think it's been difficult because you've opened, you know, you took the plunge yeah. during mm. a, a tough yeah, time. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we, we had that conversation obviously with John, it was you know, a gamble and risk, but it was one that if I didn't do now, yeah. it probably was never going to happen. Yeah. You know, we go back to that like 16 hours, this was a necessity because I we wanted, well, we wanted to be able yeah. to put on class and get through the day. And, Obviously, when I left my previous job, I was in for 17 years, it, it meant that there was no choice. You had to. You know, I had to then fill up my days, so, and I didn't want to leave the heath. Mm-hmm. You know, I, mean, I spoke to you other times, so it's got to be somewhere out there. Yeah. You, you know, we could just knock it through and make it, you know, just throw your mats down. Yeah. And, you know, like, take them down when we were in the, the main gym there, yeah. it was just a nightmare. Yeah. So now, obviously, you've got it done down permanently. And the place is literally has transformed into exactly how it had it been for a couple yeah. of years. Yeah, yeah. like I said, that dream's coming in reality. Yeah, yeah. And I'm sure, you know, mm. you, you made that commitment in the toughest time, and I think it'll pay off for you yeah, down the line. I know this place is going to be back to. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And, you know, and you will be successful. Yeah, like you said, with COVID, we've had a chance to do any openings or, yeah. or anything like that, and there's, you know, there's a lot of work going into this place, lots of people behind the scenes, obviously you guys are the Eve. Office who helped, um, got you know, guys who supported me financially yeah. to get this. Obviously, Alex, this is the man do it. Yeah. You know, I, I can't paint, you know, but yeah. that, so it's like she literally pushed me through a lot, you know. So. Yeah, because mm-hmm. at the end of the day, to make something like this, I success, you do need support anyway. Yeah, yeah. And even yeah. the lads that, you know, chip. Yeah, the lads, them. you know, did all the lads were coming in, painting, you know, mm-hmm. doors are great, smiling, and everyone was dipping in, yeah. everyone was getting in, getting yeah. involved. So it was a good, really good team effort. Yeah, and I think when we're allowed, we definitely need some sort of celebration. Oh, it's going to be a huge party. Yeah, just to celebrate it. Definitely. So, how have you been dealing with lockdown? Because it has been tough for everyone. Yeah, me personally, I don't know. Personally, just about getting to. You know, obviously, I've mentioned before, the mental health thing, you know, locking me up. Well, not not locking me up, do you know what I mean? It's kind of telling me that you've got to, you know, I'm, I'm pulling a party line, and we did as a club as well in the gym. You know, we followed all the protocols, we got the yeah. QR codes, we got the masks, we got the hand wash and everything else. 
but the, the you know, thankfully the Heath, I mean you've got into it this time, a bit of a gamble, but thankfully the guys in, in the administration of the final society you know, have been very supportive. So and the, the majority of the guys have kind of kept on the membership so we are you know, whereas the club will be okay. Mm-hmm. You know, me personally will be okay as well. We just, we just want to get back to track. So it's getting through it, isn't it? It's just getting yeah. through it. Um, so you, are you keeping in touch with the lads? Well, we've, still? Yeah, we've got a WhatsApp group. You know, we, there's plenty of bands to go on there. Um, and we've created a, like a cycling group now. So a few of the guys will get together and you know, yeah. we'll do like three or four rides a week mm-hmm. just to keep going. Yeah. It's um, important to stay in touch, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's, um, it, it, you know, it's, it's difficult because a lot of the guys, this is their, their release. You know, so now you, you've taken that. You know, for, we know we've got our opinions on what's happening. Gyms, but you know, they, they've got you know, can't work, can't train, and we've got to do this, and you know, that's going to have some detrimental effect not only financially but in your mental state. Definitely, because mm-hmm. like you said, it's much more than just yeah. you know coming in and doing well, this. Is what we just want to want to yeah. the guys come in and yeah, we're happy all day. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If anyone feels inspired from watching this video, how and you want to get involved in your Jiu Jitsu, yeah. how do they do it? Yeah, that's absolutely anyone that. Women, men, all ages. Um, so basically, if you want to get, get involved, you can contact us um, through Instagram uh, at Cheshire BJJ, uh, on Facebook, we've got a page on there, our website's down at the moment, and all the contact details are there on Instagram, Facebook. Um, so, yeah, that's uh, brilliant. Yeah. Oh, you know, we've got a phone number at the gym as well, so you can get in contact yeah. through, through the Heath Leisure Street. Yeah, Heath Leisure Street or Heath Live. Yeah. So I think we'll, we'll end it there. Sure. Um, I've enjoyed coming in today, yeah, yeah, I've learned something yeah, new, I've yeah. learned more about Jiu Jitsu yeah. and I, honestly I just wish you the best of luck yeah. and me love to see you in this facility, yeah. fantastic and I just look forward to seeing the club, the club grow even yeah. bigger. Yeah. No, it's, it's great to be here, you know, it's a um, perfect place for us. I was just thinking, maybe we should just like drop Jake and stick a gear on, on, on bar and you know, practice the chokes on it. Oh, John. <laughs> <laughs> cheers, man, thank you. Right, cheers, Alex. Cheers. Thanks, Thanks for watching, everyone. Heath Live. Take care and see you all soon.